In this video, we're going to be looking at the limiting factors of photosynthesis and how each of them affects the light-dependent reaction and the light-independent reactions. Let's have a little look at our learning objectives. We're going to understand how light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature can affect the rate of photosynthesis. Then we're going to have a little look at some graphs and we're going to interpret limiting factor data from these graphs and identify the factor that is limiting the rate in each case. Let's get started. Let's look at light intensity to begin with. So light intensity is going to limit the light dependent reaction because that's what the light dependent requires. Less light is going to mean that less chlorophyll is going to absorb the light, which means less electrons are going to become excited, which will result in less electrons passing down the two electron transport chains. Now if we were to look at this on a graph, we would look at a plant that has first, first of all been photosynthesizing in the light, and then been moved to a dark room. And the two compounds that we're interested in are glycerate 3 phosphate, or G3P, and triose phosphate, or TP. And what we notice is that as we go along, glycerate 3 phosphate, when the plant is moved into the dark, will begin to accumulate, whereas triose phosphate will go down, it will decrease. So, why does this happen? Well, the reason is quite straightforward. Without light, the light dependent reaction simply cannot occur. And the products of the light dependent reaction, that's ATP and NADPH, are not going to be produced. Therefore, glycerate 3 phosphate cannot be reduced to triose phosphate because ATP provides the energy for the reduction and NADPH provides the reducing power. It acts as a reducing agent. Moving on, we're going to look at carbon dioxide concentration, which is going to limit the light independent reaction. Less carbon dioxide means that there is less. CO2 available to combine with ribulose bisphosphate. To look at that on a graph, in a similar way to before, we're going to move a plant from where there is high CO2 to where there is low CO2. And this time the compounds we're going to be looking at are ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP, and glycerate 3 phosphate, or G3P. And what happens, similar to before, when we go along, as we increase the time, uh, ribulose bisphosphate is going to increase when we move to the low CO2 environment. Similarly, but completely the opposite in fact, glycerate 3 phosphate or G3P is going to decrease. So why is this? Well, with less CO2 available, that means that less rib ribulose bisphosphate is converted to G3P, that's glycerate 3 phosphate. Ribulose bisphosphate will accumulate and glycerate 3 phosphate will decrease. Nice and straightforward. Finally, we're going to talk about temperature. And temperature limits the light independent reaction because it's an enzyme catalyzed process. Lower temperatures mean less kinetic energy, which means that the reactions can occur slower. The opposite, higher temperatures, means that enzymes will denature and the reactions will stop happening altogether. We can look at all three limiting factors on one graph. And that's what I'm going to show you here. We're going to have four lines. One at 15 degrees C with low CO2, one at 15 degrees C with high CO2, one at 25 degrees C with low CO2, and one at 25 degrees C with high CO2. Along the x-axis we're going to have light intensity, and what we're going to see is that all of the, all of the lines show a similar pattern. Um, 15 degrees C and low CO2 looks like this, then we look at 15 degrees C with high CO2 coming off a little bit higher, 25C and low CO2 looks like this, and 25C and high CO2 looks like this. And what we can do is we can isolate key regions on this graph to talk about. For instance, here. And this region here is where light intensity is the limiting factor, because all of the, we can see that the lines are stacked one on top of each other. So nothing that we're changing from line to line is making a difference. So instead, the limiting factor must be the light intensity. These regions here, well, this is where temperature is limiting because the 15 C lines are much, much lower than the 25 C lines. Let's switch things around a bit and have a look at two, sorry, one other key region. That's here and here, where CO2 is limiting. So these, these pieces of data, this is where uh, we have the 15 C with low CO2, and we notice that that's much lower than the 15 C with high CO2, and the same is true with the 25 C data. So we know that at that point, carbon dioxide concentration is limiting. So, 
At any one time, one factor will always be limiting the rate of photosynthesis. Although we can only deduce which factor it is if we have data for all three limiting factors. Let's summarise. Light intensity limits the light dependent reaction. And when we do that, glycerate 3 phosphate will accumulate. Carbon dioxide concentration limits the light independent reaction, and ribulose bisphosphate will accumulate. Temperature limits the light independent reaction, either by being too low, which limits the kinetic energy, or being too high, which causes enzymes to denature. And there is always a limiting factor. So here's some further reading for you. The first is from the Royal Society of Chemistry, an excellent set of more chemistry-based notes, as you would come to expect from the RSC. And then on the right, we have some more excellent notes from A2 Biology 101. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.